Hi everyone, um, thanks for checking out this video. So this is going to be another like pretty short but hopefully useful um, R tutorial for you guys. So um, I'm going to be using the same example data set as last time. It's this gene expression uh, data set where we have 20 genes and um, 10 samples. And I called the samples like five control samples and then five drug samples. And then for every sample we have... Um, some kind of like normalized expression level for each gene. And then, so yeah, we basically just have this like uh, regular like gene expression matrix here. Um, and then the goal of this video is to make this type of heat map. So this is a correlation heat map that basically shows um, how every how every gene is correlated to every other gene in terms of exp expression. So that's what the color is showing here. The color is showing like the level of correlation. And then the genes are um, clustered with this like hierarchical clustering based on um, how closely they're correlated uh, to all the other genes. So yeah, there's going to be like a pretty quick but hopefully um, helpful video for you guys. Uh, this is something that I recently had to do at my job. So um, I think it's something that if you're working in bioinformatics, you're probably going to be doing a lot of these types of uh, these types of bots. Um, so yeah, let's uh, get started with it. Uh, okay, so first things first, I always start off my R files with the same line. I always have this line here just to clear the environment of any variables we might have. We don't we don't have any right now, but you know, just run this to just clear the environment, um, just like refresh everything. Um, okay, so then. Next, we need to import uh, the library we're going to be using to make the heat map. So it's going to be library p heat map. Um, and if you don't have it installed already, uh, you're just going to say install.packages um, p heat map. And you're just going to, you're just going to put that in, uh, in the console down here to get it installed. Um, okay, so the next thing is to read in the file. Um, we want to read it in as a data frame to get it um, so that we can work with it. So you're going to say data uh, equals arrow um, read.table. Um, I have this in a folder called data, and then I, I called it gene expression.csv. Um, if you guys want to download this file to practice with, by the way, it's uh, up on my GitHub. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to, if you want to download it to, to practice with. Um, and then comma, header, true, because we have our, our header that's like the column labels here. Um, row names equals one, because the first column is the names of all the rows, the names of the genes there. And then sep equals um, comma, because it's a CSV. If this was like a tab separated file, for example, it would be, it would be like that. Um, but yeah, we're working with the CSV, so sep equals comma, and okay. So yeah, this this read uh, the data in as a um, as a as a, a data frame. So just to show you guys, class um, data, yeah, it's a data frame. Uh, I can kind of take a look at it. Um, oops, yeah, take a look at it. Uh, looks looks right. It's got all all the genes. Um, and then a column for every sample, and then the expression levels. Um, okay, so what we need to do next is we need to calculate like a correlation matrix that basically, um, the correlation matrix will have a row for every gene and a column for every gene. And then each element will show um, the correlation between the, the row gene and the column gene. So basically, yeah, we wanna have a row for every gene and a column for every gene. So 20 rows, 20 columns. Um, what we have to do first is the function we're going to we're going to use it calculates the correlations um, like column by column, but we want to get the the, cor the correlations between the genes, which are the rows. So to use this function, we have to first transpose the data. So I'll just I'll show you guys right now um, the shape of this data frame. Uh, 20 by 10, we want to reverse it. We want the genes to be the columns and the samples to be the rows because the correlation function is going to be computing um, the, the column-wise correlations. So we're going to say data equals T for transpose data. Uh, we're going to run that. And now we say dim data um, 10 by 20. So now we have... Um, now we have the genes as the columns, which is how we want it. 
Um, okay, so next we're going to calculate the, um, the the correlation matrix. So I'm going to just call this core mat, um, and then the the actual function is going to be just whoops core data. Um, run that again. Like R makes a lot of this stuff just so easy. Um, so um, yeah, maybe just take take a look at this now. Um, and yeah, just like we wanted, it has it has a row for every gene and a column for every gene, and then it's showing um, the the elements with correlations between the two genes, and it's got this diagonal of ones like down the diagonal because for every gene, like gene one is perfectly correlated with itself. You know what I mean? So that's why we have that diagonal of ones there. Um, okay, so next we want to visualize this in a heat map, and again, um, R also makes this like very very easy. So I'm just going to say p uh, p heat map. Whoops. Um, core mat. Um, whoops. Font size row 10. Uh, font size call 10. You don't even need these. You can just leave it the, the default font size, but I think I'll, I'll uh, set these manually here. And then main, this is going to be our, our title. Um, so I'll just call it gene expression correlations um okay so let's uh run this and see what we get and yeah this is our um gene expression correlation heat map um so yeah it looks like mostly mostly like somewhat positive correlations a couple a couple negative ones they they can go below zero remember you can have negative correlations too but there's just not a lot of them in this uh fake data set I made up. And then, yeah, we got like the clustering of which genes have um, similar expression. And by the way, the clustering of like the column wise clustering, if you if you look carefully at it, it's the same as the row wise clustering because it's the same gene you're talking about. It, this is like a symmetrical, um, a symmetrical plot here. Uh, you can you, you can see if you look kind of closely at it. Uh, but OK, so when I showed you guys my example one here, it looks a bit nicer. It has this nice like blue color scheme. So I'll show you guys how to make the color scheme of this one a little bit nicer. Um, okay, so the way you're going to do this is uh, you're going to import a library called um, R Color Brewer. Uh, okay, let's import this library. Um, and then, oh yeah, by the way, if you don't have this installed, it's going to be uh, whoops, yeah, install packages uh, R Color Brewer, and you're just going to put that like right in the console down here. Um, yeah, to get it installed. Uh, okay, and then I'm going to say colors equals um, color ramp palette um, brewer dot pal, and then you guys can just kind of trust me on the syntax for this one. I'm going to say nine blues. You can make this whatever you want. Any other color? Um, I just like blue, so I'm, gonna go, I'm yeah, I'm just gonna go with blue. Um, at 255, yeah, again, just kind of trust me on the syntax. Um, and then yeah, so then after that, we're basically just gonna use this command again, except we're gonna add a new argument for colors. Uh, wh whoops, sorry. It's actually, call equals uh, colors. And okay. Yep, and now it looks now it looks nice with this like nice um, blue color scheme. It looks like the one we got originally, and then yeah, from here then you can um, export, save as PDF maybe. Um, yep. So yeah, again like pretty short, um, hopefully useful video for you guys. Um, any questions? Just let me know in the comments, and uh, I'll put the I'll put the code and the uh, example data set up on my GitHub, and I'll link to that in the description if you guys want to download it. Um, but yeah, any questions? Just let me know, and. Um, Thanks for watching and see you guys next time.